Good evening, good evening. It is time to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. How good is he? He's better to me than I've been to myself. <laughs> no, Amen. We, we uh, mentioned the announcements again. Uh, we have Mother's Day next weekend, only one service uh, Sunday morning. We'll be here tomorrow night for prayer and Wednesday night for Bible study. Our graduate recognition and luncheon the following Sunday, May 21st. We got a bunch of graduates. I'm excited about that and all the other good stuff. And, and remember the uh, uh, bilingual uh, ladies ministry on the 20th. I guess that's a Saturday night. That's going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be here? Amen. Glory to God. I see all of our, our young ladies are back from camp today, uh, the, this afternoon. Praise God. God answers prayer. Why don't you stand to your feet and let's, uh, let's, let's look to the Lord. Lord, we love you. And Father, I just thank you for your, your awesome presence. And I ask you, Lord, to come on into this place and show yourself strong. Lord, just uh, meet with us, Master. Thank you for the, the move of your spirit today. It's a, it's a wonderful thing, God, to be in your presence. And I always, always am thankful when you show up. And Lord, I know that, that, that you're always here, but Lord, when your presence is manifested, it's just a wonderful thing. And so we say thank you for that. Lord, I pray that for all of the ministries that are those that are going on tonight and with the kids in the back and, Lord, those that uh, they go on all week long. and Lord, I just pray that you bless them with this same presence, this manifest presence of Jesus. Lord, as we prepare for, for missions, Lord, uh, we're talking to somebody this morning. They said, it's just a missions church. Lord, it's, it's your mission. And we just want to be about your business. So, Father, we thank you for for just uh, putting your arms around us and sharing your heart for the nations. Use us, use us, use us is my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it and everybody shout it out. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Glad you're here. No, my. 
Come on, come on, just blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you really believe you, that you're standing in his presence, I want you just to worship him like he's right there in front of you. Come on, hallelujah. Lord, you've been so good to me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, come on. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. 
Come on and just close your eyes and just really love on him. I just want you to tell him, just tell him how much you appreciate. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for, for Gethsemane. Oh, Lord, you could have you called 10,000 angels, but you chose to, to walk that Via Della Rosa just for me. Thank you, Lord. Now I'm invited to come into this holy ground to come boldly to the throne of grace and find grace. I thank you for that grace, Master. Lord, show yourself strong. Show yourself strong. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Come on, could you just sing it just one more time? Just one more time. Come on. Hallelujah. We're standing on holy ground. Sing it. We are standing. Bless the Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Thank you, guys. Y'all are awesome. I did not like you. You guys are all right, too. Amen. You're welcome. I, I, I couldn't find the other one, but I got that one. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're in uh, Luke 21 tonight. I want to go back and read our New Testament passage from this morning, and I'm going to finish this message up on hearing, seeing, and doing. Hearing and seeing is, is hearing things that others cannot hear and seeing things that others cannot see is uh, part of the privilege of being a child of God, and we, uh, we covered that this morning. And tonight we'll finish up with doing things that, that others cannot do, but you can't just get to the doing until you get through the hearing and the seeing. Amen. Amen. Luke 21, verse 12. But before all this occurs, there will be a time of great persecution. You will be dragged into the synagogues and prisons. You will stand trial before kings and governors because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. So don't worry in advance about how to answer the charges against you, for I will give you the right words. That means you've got to hear it if you're going to get it. And such wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to refute you, even those closest to you, your parents, your brothers and relatives and friends, will betray you, and they'll even kill some of you. And everyone will hate you because you're my followers, but not a hair of your head will perish. And this is what King James says, in your patience possess ye your souls. In the NLT here it says, by standing firm you will win your souls. And we're talking tonight about, about winning in the arena of the soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions. Amen. <clears throat> if I can, uh, Brother Clendenin used to teach, if I can think the thoughts of God, I can do the works of God. That, <clears throat> you know, you could, you could cut... Anthony's hands off and transplant them on my hands and I still wouldn't be able to play the piano but if you could take his mind and put it in there I'd be able to play because ability is not in the hand it's in the mind and so if, if I have the mind of Christ I can do the works of Christ come on that that's that that's just it's 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 the battle for the mind is the first thing we talked about this morning and 
and how we go about that, amen, is, is renewing that mind. And then the, 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 the mind, the will, amen. Somebody say, thank God for Gethsemane. That, that Jesus, in, that, in, in Gethsemane, he had to make a choice. And friends, you're going to have to make a choice every day. God, I'm not going to do what I want to do right now. If I did, I'd be in jail. <laughs> that spirit of slap hits me more, more than I care to admit sometimes. You know, and, but it's, it's we have the ability. Now, before I became a believer, I didn't have the ability to choose. I just simply followed my, my will. But as a believer, I now have the ability, the freedom to choose to walk with Christ, to, to do the will and the purpose of God. And so that's, uh, that was our second point. Hearing a voice that, that others cannot hear gives us the ability, amen, to think things other, other, things other cannot think. Seeing things others cannot see gives us the ability to will, amen. But then there's the doing of it. The doing of it is the issue, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Win the mind by hearing the, God's voice. Win the will by seeing the unseen. And last, we're going to win the emotions by doing the hard things. Father, thank you for your word. I pray tonight, I thank you your word's already anointed. Lord, I need you to anoint me to preach Lord, this, this word, this truth in such a manner that, God, the, 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 the spirit man will overcome, Lord, every, every stronghold of the enemy. And we give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Emotions, they're wonderful, aren't they? They're funny things. They're, they're, they're dangerous because they imitate reality. You do know emotions are just imitations of what's real. <clears throat> uh, they're, but really, they're just fleeting vapors of that which is eternal. Uh, most of us, uh, if, if we talk about it in a minute, we're going we're gonna to name some emotions, but just kind of get, get you the drift of where I'm going. Depression is, is, is an emotion. It's, a, it's an emotional response, right? And uh, it is uh, one of the biggest symptoms of depression is what? Huh? Sadness? What? fatigue, lethargy. You just want to lay there. And what do you want to do when you're depressed? Nothing. <laughs> huh? You're a recluse. You don't want to do nothing. Right? And so what's the way out of it? Get up and do something. Come on. You, it, it's, it's, you, have, to, you have to will yourself to do something different, right? The desire to lay around and sleep and not doing anything. So, folks, it's time to get up, and only by acting or doing, by faith, doing what God commands us to do, can we get out of the trouble that we're in. So let's name some negative emotions. Let's hear negative emotions real quick. Hate, Hate anger, rage, jealousy. You know, I've hit two of them I had here. Bitterness, that's good. Envy. Unforgiveness, that's going to be a hard one for me to deal with here. Fear, sorrow, and we all said anger and jealousy. I just kind of just pulled out a few. Though, now, what's some positive emo, uh, emotions? Love, joy, peace. Wow. You know, y'all's y'all, mind is amazing. So... Let's go back to the negative emotions, fear. Is it negative to, to fear a snake? No. Oh. So let's talk about sorrow. What if, it, what if your sorrow for, from doing, what if, it, what if sorrow keeps you from doing the bad thing again? Is that a negative emotion? Anger. Did Jesus get angry? <laughs> Jealousy. Is jealousy and anger? I mean, is jealousy an emotion? God, many times in the scriptures, God got jealous. Let's talk about the positive emotions. Love. What if you love the thing that's destroying you? What if joy, it, it, joy is, is it positive if you're joyful that your child lived while somebody else's child died? Peace. If you live in constant peace while things around you should disturb that peace, is that really a positive emotion? 
Sometimes you need your peace disturbed, don't you? I, I, I went through that little exercise because I want you to see emotions. You see somebody that's driven by their emotions and they're just like everywhere. And you really don't know, what, you know how this is going to turn out. And it's why the believer is not meant to be led by your emotions. And it's funny that when, when y'all did the same thing I did. When I started trying to name positive emotions, I was simply listing Galatians talking about the fruit of the Spirit. So, so it's the, the, that's really not emotion, that's fruit. Right? So, so it's, it's the, the fruit is the evidence of a life that has been governed by the Holy Spirit. And so to overcome or to win the battle of you, how many of you know somebody, not you, but you know somebody that just lives by their emotions? Yeah, amen. <laughs> not talking about your, your, your spouse sitting there, right? It, it's amazing that when Jesus taught the parable of the sower, you know, the, the, it, it was a, actually it's a parable of the soils, Right? There was the, the seed that fell on the rocky soil. It was the rocky soil that hears it and with joy received it. Yet, they didn't, they didn't go on because they had no root. They only had an emotional affection or an emotional attachment to the Word. It, it, we just described about half of the, the charismatic Pentecostal church. People have an emotional attachment to, to the music. They used to come to our church because we were Pentecostal. We, we, no, 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 that's not right. We were Pentecostal. And people would come just to hear the music. Oh, man, we had some powerful music. And it was all black gospel. Hey, we get to. And, and, and you could get really caught up in the emotion of it and never have an attachment to the Christ that it was aimed at. You see, that's, it, it, it's emotions will mess you up. Whether they're good or whether they're bad. Now, honey, I love to shout and holler and dance with the best of them. Now, y'all didn't see a lot of that because I was always tied to that bass. If they'd had wireless basses back in them days, I'd have been all over that church. <laughs> but now you cut me loose from that bass and I'm out there cutting a rug. Amen. I love the emotion. I was, I'm not made to be in a Methodist church. I'm not created that way. I, I got to have me some, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> I, I'm sorry, that's just who I am. <laughs> but, yeah, that's why me and Earl, we get each other. I, oh, Earl getting the spirit and he, all right, quit, quit messing around. Right. <laughs> So I believe that God is, if, if, especially in this last day, God is calling us to something more than just an emotional response to the gospel. Just an, we're not just going to get moved by the music, but we're going to be moved by the Christ that we're singing about. Uh, and, and many and, and tonight, when we're singing uh, uh, the, those two old songs, what was it before standing on holy ground? What was the one you did? You deserve the glory. You are great. You do miracles so great. And I just got caught up with the music at first because it took me back. And I had to get a hold of my mind. I literally did this while I'm worshiping. Stop, stop. Jesus, you are great. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that I, I, because even I can sometimes get caught up worshiping the worship and having an emotional response. Rather than worship the God that we're singing to and singing about. Amen? This is how you win the battle for your emotions. Emotions are good things, and they can take you places. Amen? I love, I'm an emotional critter. But, but you know, God made us that way. Now, you, you show me somebody that doesn't get, you know, that, that's not emotional. They make me very nervous. You know, just, I'm like, you know, they're on too many meds. Come on, lose your meds. Let's see who's really behind the veil. Come on. <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, come on, if I can't get you happy or angry or some, get some kind of movement out of you, I'm, I'm nervous about you, right? You know, I, anyway, so, you know, the old school, that's what they, they, they expected, you know, preachers just to be, and I read one of those quotes today from John Wesley, you know, we ought to just be, uh, you know, one, yeah, that, that, that's true, we, we shouldn't be driven by our emotions. 
But come on, y'all. God, God made us emotional. You see Jesus weeping. You see him happy. You see him angry. I'm just, I'm just saying. So there's, there's that. So emotions are neither good or bad. They are part of the human experience. But in our fallen state, listen to me now. Listen to me. In our fallen state, your emotions cannot be trusted. In your fallen state, you cannot trust emotions because they're manipulated by, by everything around you. So let's look at some dangerous emotions. Sorrow. Sorrow is depression's cousin. Amen? Uh, in Genesis, Esau was sorrowful, and he never got over it. His, because of it, his, he was forever tied to the failure of his past. In Hebrews 12, 15, and 16, put that up there, Hebrews 12. Verse 15, let's look at this. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out so that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting. Now, now look at what he said. Bitterness. Is bitterness, I think somebody said that earlier. Hit that next one, brother. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. One more time. You know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected, and it was too late for repentance, even though he's begged with bitter tears. So conviction, this is a lot of people, they, 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 they feel conviction, and they come to an altar, and they think because they're weeping and crying and emotional, they think that that's repentance. Come on, that emotion is a liar. That's not repentance, that's sorrow. That's, that's sorrow. You need to get beyond godly sorrow, and you need to repent. Amen? And that means turn. Okay, you got, what does that repentance mean? You got to do something with that emotion of regret. You got to turn around. You got to start walking in the other direction. Is that right? Amen. Amen. That, that's genuine repentance. So sorrow is a dangerous, uh, I mean, Esau, he was bitter, he was godless, and he, his resentment and bitterness followed him to the grave. Sorrow is a dangerous emotion in the life of the believer because it deals only with the emotional side of man and not the spiritual side of man, and it will only end in death. But godly sorrow brings hope in God because it leads us to repentance. Amen? Amen. There's somebody else in that New Testament, Judas. Mm -hmm. Judas had remorse. He regretted what he did. Regret. Oh, what an emotion. He regretted what he did. He came back and he threw those, th those 30 pieces of silver back at the Pharisees. He, there was no light, no hope, and he went out and hung himself, and the result was death. The greatest tragedy is not his betrayal of Jesus, but that he gave way to despair when he could have found hope. Come on. Do you believe even Judas could have been saved? Even Judas could have repented? Absolutely. Absolutely. But he gave in to his despair. He gave in to bitterness. Come on. Which is just an emotion. It's not real life. You see, when we focus on emotion, we think that that's, that's real. But as we've already proven at the beginning, go back and watch this. It, it, emotions can be good or bad, positive or negative. The same emotion can, be, you know, can, can lead you to godliness or lead you out of it, depending on, on, on your response to it. Amen? The answer is, is, do not allow emotion to keep you from doing the will of God. Amen? Come on. The, it, i got a couple of things I want to say about this here. The enemy uses our wounds by attaching lies to our pains. He'll attach a lie to the pain. You'll never, you know, you're not worthy. You'll ne you, you know, you can't, you won't. Come on. He attaches lies to the pain, and by those lies, he, he gins up emotion of regret and sorrow and bitterness. Come on. Esau, and J Esau sought for uh, repentance. He didn't really seek repentance. That, that's kind of a, a, a little theological conundrum there. Judas never sought. He just got bitter, and he went out and ended it all. And as a result, you know, he's in eternity. His eternity is secured in a sad way. The, 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 the thing is, and y'all have heard me, I preached this message a couple of times in this church. The power of sin is, see, is secrecy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and secrets make you sick. Yeah. Come on. That's, that's, you know, that's fear. I can't, I can't really bring this stuff out because nobody will understand. Come on. How many of you heard some of these lies? You know, I, 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 can't, I can't confess that. I can't share that. 
you know, one time, the first, this is the first time the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. We were visiting, you know, people that were visit, coming to the church. And, and there's this couple that he was pimping out his wife when they came to the church. <laughs> it was crazy. And, and they got saved. Yeah, true story. They got saved, and, and it was a beautiful thing. And, man, she's just growing, got filled with the Holy Ghost. And he, he, he was, he'd been in and out of the penitentiary. And, and he, the guy weighs like 300 pounds and not an ounce of fat on him. He was... He was a scary-looking dude, <laughs> right? And so he starts laying out a church, and me and the pastor, we go to visit, you know, and, and I'm over there, and, and, and Brother Jay's talking to him, and the Holy Ghost says, unnatural affection. My first, my first time to ever have a word of knowledge, I'm like, uh, this boy's too big for me to say that to. <laughs> now, now, I had I I was pretty I was a scrapper back in that day, but not that big. <laughs> and uh, but the boy, the Lord kept kept clarifying. And my mind took that word. That's a whole other teaching. I kind of begin to spool off what that could possibly mean. Let me help you. When God gives you a word, don't turn it into a paragraph. <laughs> Hey, he just gave me a word. And so, if I, you know, after there was a little lull in the conversation, I said, Bill, I said, you, you got some things you need to repent of. Not that Bill. Not that Bill. Did I say his name? I, well, he's probably dead now anyway. He said, he said, what do you mean? I said, uh, I said, I said, the Lord, uh, the, I said, I could, I could tell you what it is. I'm kind of trying to be sweet. I said, but the Lord showed me what your, what your problem is, and you need to confess it. And, man, it hit him. I didn't say the word out of my mouth yet. I just said, the Lord has just shown me what your problem is. Now, I'm thinking he'd been in the prison, unnatural affection, maybe homosexual or something, you know. And he, I, I couldn't do that. You're my brothers. I'm like, exactly. That's the reason you can confess your sin if they're your brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Confess your faults one to another. Yeah. But because of that, that negative emotion of fear, fear of being found out, he wouldn't confess it. And as a result, he completely backslid. And two years later, he went back to the penitentiary for, for molesting his stepdaughter. God knew what he was doing. And if I, if I hadn't been a little nervous, maybe I would have been more confident in the word of the Lord and I would have confronted him in, in a stronger fashion. Would that have made a difference? I don't know. I doubt it. He was full of pride and self-will and needed, needed that nudge, that, 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 that hammer of the word to knock him down. I'm just saying... The, 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 the power of sin is secrecy, and secrets will make you sick. So, so you don't need to allow your emotions to keep you from living out the Word of God. When God says confess it, confess it. Don't let fear and pride and, and, this, and this stuff keep you from, from getting free. Amen? God wants you free. He loves you too much to leave you in this prison that you find yourself in. Amen. Because of the, of, the, of the lies that the enemy has attached to your pain, it's built a prison wall around you. And the truth of God's word to tear down those emotional responses and let you see things clearly. Okay, I can hear that song. I can Self-inflicted, yes. So the more we believe the lies, the more we hide. And the more we hide, the sicker we become. The answer is do not allow the emo emotion to keep you from doing the will of God from doing the hard things. Amen. How hard is it for you to come and confess to somebody? Why? Let's talk about it. why is it hard? You had to do it this morning. God got a hold of Pat. There's still a God. Got a hold of Pat in the service this morning. <laughs> Amen. It's difficult. You know, but it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be hard. That, that when, when you begin to feel that, that the enemy pushing you from doing the will of God, that's when you need to attack that right there. Yeah. Oh, man. Why? It's like going after gold. Amen. When you get just a little flash of color, man, that's when they really start digging. Because you know that behind that little, little, little piece of rock right there, there's going to be a treasure. Come on now. When you see the Spirit of God prompting you to, 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 to push a little deeper, to go a little further, come on. Don't, don't stop. Do the, uh, I preached that a few weeks ago, I think almost a month ago now. I can do hard things. I can do those hard things if I'll just press on in. Amen? Amen. It is. <clears throat> so we do the hard things. Gethsemane was emotional. Jesus was on his knees in Gethsemane praying to the Father, trying not to calculate what was coming. But to clarify the will of the Father, he prayed, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. 
Therefore, I'm required of the Lord to pray the same thing and to ask the same thing uh, uh, and to will the same thing as a believer. Amen? Your responsibility, let me quit talking about me. Your responsibility, you are required to will the will of God. Not my will, but your will be done. How many of you have trouble with that sometimes? All right, I got a bunch of truth tellers in here tonight. It's going to have to get on you for lying. <clears throat> Amen. It's, it's, I've got to will the will of God it means I've got to die to my own stuff. Amen. It, <clears throat> it is impossible for the Christian to ascertain the will of God living in their emotions. If Gethsemane showed us anything, it showed us how a man must dig to the depths of his soul, into the depths of his own soul, and root out anything that would be opposite the purpose of the Father. I'm not sure it's possible for 98% of the church to pray such a prayer. Come on. Are you real? Now, now you, uh, count the cost here. Are you really ready to pray, Lord, not my will? But your will be done. It's scary. scary. What are the what 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 lies on the other side of that will? Oh, let me tell you something. All of heaven lies on the other side of that prayer. You see, we on this side we fear. Look, if if Jesus it created such turmoil, he sweat great drops of blood. Let me tell you something. It's not going to be flippant and easy for you to pray that. No, I, oh, I know. You come up here and mouth those words. You can lie to God while in your praying. But if you're going to really, really get down and say, Lord, I, I don't want my will. I want yours. Honey, that's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. Oh, but that's the way you're going to beat the emotion. It's the way you're going to win that battle. Amen. It's the way you're going to win it. God, uh, Steve Cutno said this uh, a, a couple of years ago, and I wrote it down. I found it here this afternoon as I was going through some old notes. God is most glorified when we are most satisfied with him. <laughs> God is most glorified when we're most satisfied with him. And what does that mean? If, that I'm, I'm, I'm most satisfied when his will is done in my life. He gets great glory out of that. Oh, man, I love, I love, I love, I love. Now, looking back over the last 17 years, some of you that were here that, for that first year heard me whining and moaning and complaining about being, being down here in the swamp. <laughs> I, I used to talk about, about, about claw marks all the way down 288. I, I come down here very reluctantly, not willing, but I knew I, I, as soon as I told Brother Granberry I'd come preach, I got up and I shut the door and I got on my knees and I cried like a baby in my office. I knew what God was doing, and I just, it was my Gethsemane. I had to, I had to forcibly, uh, with great pain and effort, choose God's will over mine. I was going to be, I'd already be in the hill country, but God had a different plan. I was free to choose that, but not if I was going to keep walking with him. Come on. You're free to choose your own will, but not if you're going to continue walking with, with God. If you're going to walk in the power of the Most High, you're going to do His will or you're not going to walk with Him. We talked about it, read that verse this morning. You're going to hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And you're going to, but you're going to, you can hear that voice, but to do it, you're going to have to overcome your emotional attachment to things. My horses. Do you, do you realize my identity was wrapped up in horses and cowboying? And I had to choose to lay that aside? I was never going to be in a church like this again, ever. I said that. I told Brother Granberry that. Never, never, never. Be careful. <laughs> when, you, when you tell God never, he... I heard him. The Lord, he who sits in the heavens laughs. <laughs> but, oh, honey, I would not give all of my 65 years for what I've experienced this, the, the, the last 17 years. This has been the most glorious thing. Amen? Amen. But I had to get over those emotions. I had to get over my identity. I had to get over my desires. 
my understanding of what, what my ministry was going to be and accept God's definition and His plan. Amen. That is the battle, the mind, the will, the emotions that you and I have got to, that we've got to contend with. Amen? <clears throat> Oops, I went to the top. You don't need to start back over again at the top. <laughs> All right, I talked about sorrow. The answer, do not allow emotion to keep you from doing the hard things. Amen. There we go. One of the main reasons that, that men, some men don't work out. The, let me just, let me, let me put me here. One of the main reasons I don't work out or I don't possess my soul is because maybe, maybe we don't have a good enough role model. Amen. If this thing is just about you, then you won't go through the pain to change your position. <laughs> Why not just sit there and play Xbox all day long? I'm not looking up. I'm just reading my notes. This is, this is not about you. This is about your sons and your daughters and your grandchildren. Come on. This is about your family name. This is about the generations that are coming behind us. It's why I do what I do. Man, after the first three or four years here, and I'm, I, I was trying to keep the cowboy church going, so I had three jobs going at one time, and my kids are losing their mind. They're like, Dad, you can't keep up this schedule. You can't keep up this. I said, girls, as long as God provides the grace, I'm obligated. Come on. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to do the will of God because he continues to provide that grace. Amen. And, and knowing that it's not just about me, that I'm leaving a legacy. And I said that last week. I heard it a couple of weeks ago that, that when you're a young man, you focus on making a living. When you're middle aged, you focus on making a life. And when you get to be an old man, you focus on leaving a legacy. Come on. But everything is leading to legacy. You're not going to take a shortcut as a young man. You got to do the hard things as a young man. You got to do the hard things as a middle aged man, woman. I'm not mankind. I'm not leaving you ladies out. Come on, if you're going to overcome these emotions, if you're going to, if you're going to live by faith and not just by, by your emotion, you're going to have to choose to do the hard things. Amen? I, ca I carry it, it, this one man preached it this way What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world, but he, he loses his own son? He's talking to preachers at that, at that, at that meeting. I carry a name that is bigger than I am. The Dubos name has a long history of preachers and pastors and theologians and deacons and just ordinary solid men of God. And I'm not talking about the Dubos name. I'm talking about the name as a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian, and so I do not live for myself. Come on, church. We used to sing at convention, Brother Pat, so many lives depend on what I do. God, give me the strength I'm going on for you. Are you listening to me? I, you can't live in your emotion and, and, and with these at, the, at one point and at the same time understand that their lives depending on what you do. You know, there are people that watch you that you don't even know. And, and, and it's amazing. It's amazing that, that, you know, when you start getting a little distance from them, they tell you, man, I'm, you know, I saw you. You did what? You're watching me. I didn't even know who you were. It doesn't matter. They know who you are. Amen. You name the name of Christ and he puts a light on you. This is my beloved son, my beloved daughter, whom I'm well pleased. Amen. The only man he, that's ever been spoken of was Christ. But who's living on the inside of you? Come on. That same, that same voice is coming out. You are my beloved son. Amen. That, that uh, Christy, I had to think of your name for a minute. Christy is my beloved son. Well, she's a woman, Pastor. But Christ is in her. And, the, and, the, and God's approval is on her life. Come on. Because she's not wigging back and forth with her emotions. Amen. So many lives. I, I believe it was Ian Bounds said in, a, in his book on prayer when he said he had long since ceased praying for his own needs. He said, I spend my time praying for the needs of others because in doing so, I'm quite sure God's going to take care of mine. Amen. Have you matured to that point? <laughs> God help us. Help us to get there. Where I, and I said, I've learned that, that, that if, if, if I will quit whining and crying over my own issues and not be distracted or pulled away from the place of intercession, then I find I become so valuable to the kingdom of God that God takes care of my needs. That's not to say I don't pray for my family, but it simply means that I have such confidence and trust in God that I know he's caring for my family, so I'm faithful to my calling. Amen? Amen. Be faithful. Faithfulness is not an emotion. That's a commitment. That's a choice. Amen. My, I, and I, I prayed this over some folks here this morning. I said, my children are the beneficiaries of, of the blessings of my obedience to Christ. Come on. That, that, that there's, a, there's a reward for obedience. 
There's a reward for walking in truth and faith. And my children and my grandchildren are going to be the beneficiaries of that obedience. Come on. I, I, I live with that. I live with that knowing that I'm having to plow some pretty deep, deep soil. But my kids are going to have that Isaac blessing on them. Y'all know Isaac? Abraham had to dig wells. All Isaac had to do was pull out a few rocks. <laughs> I want my family, my children and grandchildren to have that Isaac blessing. Just well, come on. So I can't, I can't go by what I see. I've got to live by, with purpose. Amen. And truth. All right. I'm almost done here. So I serve God with the long range look. I endure suffering. I endure suffering. We thought we finished up with that this morning. Knowing that there is an eternal weight of glory that is being produced as I obey Christ in the middle of the pain. I don't like that. I don't like pain. I don't like trouble. I want to just have an easy life. That's why I became a Christian. <laughs> How's that working for you? <laughs> hey, I'm going to say it again. Shambach, Shambach had the best theology on that. He said the initial physical evidence of the baptism in the Holy Ghost is not tongues. It's trouble. <laughs> I, so I remain steadfast and committed to my local church so that my children... And your children one day can attend this church with a confidence, knowing that the leadership here are men and women of integrity and honor, <coughs> and that my children can inherit a legacy and a purpose. That there's something so powerful to be able to look back and see generations, to talk about, about men and women like sister, brother and sister Rich, and brother and sister Maynard, and, and uh, 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 the... Uh, McKinley's, thank you. They're the ones I was thinking about. Uh, they're all kin. Well, we ain't going to talk about that. <laughs> but, but to be able to look back at the founding members of this church, many of them I met when I first came. As they were, as the sun was setting on their generation, it was rising in another generation. Come on. Same God, but they had a legacy of faithfulness. Sister, McK uh, Sister uh, 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 Rich, Sister Rich, she was the, the, uh, the cafeteria, the, the kitchen Nazi. She was. She told me. She told me how she set a pastor straight one time. Said, said that new pastor come in, and she said, I went back there, and there's a coffee cup sitting in that, in that sink. She said, I got that coffee cup, and I marched myself to his office, and I put that on his desk. And now that sink was empty when you came here, and it'll be empty when you leave. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you need to get that spirit on you, but I'd go sit with her. At her house and talk to her, and she talked about her and her husband, how her and her husband hung some of these lights and put up these walls, and how they worked to build this church. Oh, and it would move my soul to know that there was a generation that they didn't just go to church; they were invested in what God was doing here. Come on, y'all! And 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 so now I can point back to them and encourage some of us here tonight. You need to live beyond yourself. You need to understand that 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 these what these buildings you're building here are going to be here for your children and your grandchildren and to to be a testimony to this community. You can't you can't get there just by the doodads chasing the doodads. Now I love doodads, amen. But that's not what it's all about. Sometimes you have to just get up and will the will of God by doing the hard things. Amen. Amen? All right. I said I was almost done, but I lied to you. <laughs> and if I fail, <clears throat> let me see here. If I fail to fulfill my purpose in God, then the kingdom of God experiences loss. The loss of my influence, the loss of those that I may lead, the loss of more light in this world. Amen? Again, I want to go back to that song, that chorus, so many lives depend on what you do. Purpose is not always visible, but problems are. The purpose of God is not always easily discernible, but problems are always there. So you've got to get your eyes off of the trouble that you can see and get your eyes on the promise that you cannot see. And don't let the pain of what you can see create an emotional uh, 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 disaffection for the will and purpose of God. I love to do the will of God, even if it means I've got to override fear and doubt and, and whatever. What, <laughs> do you understand what I had to overcome to come be a pastor? 
for about the first five years I was here, I kept all I could talk about was sheep bite. <laughs> all, the crew that was here, they're going, I remember them those days. Because I was overcoming my stuff. I did man, I didn't want to be in a bunch of Christians. I'd rather be out there with a bunch of lost cowboys. <laughs> I could trust them. <laughs> they were easy to detect what they were thinking. Said the brother pats you on the back and cuts and stick a knife in it. You know when, when he's come on. It, it, it's you know, and I didn't want to get back into that. And I had to override all of that stuff. The lies that were attached to my pain. I had to, had to say, you know what? I choose to put all that aside and walk in the purpose of God. And when I made that choice, suddenly reading this book of 2 Corinthians and hear Paul saying things like, death is working in us, but it's producing life in you. I'm like, I can see that, Paul. Paul had to overcome a bunch of emotional baggage. Because yeah, you do understand the church rejected him when he got saved. They, they, they didn't want that. I mean, he went to Arabia not because he was on vacay or he was taking a sabbatical. He went to Arabia because nobody wanted to be around the boy. He's like, here, I, I'm, I'm not a, I, I've lost position with the Jews because I identify with a Christian, and the Christian don't want me because of, I, I, of what I used to be as a Jew. I'm a man without a people and a man without a name. Come on. Until one day Barnabas said, you know what? Barnabas, that's my hero. I, you you, you want to find Barnabas when you get to heaven, come look for me because I'm going to hang with that dude. I mean, Barnabas, son of consolation. He was always looking and rescuing men, grabbing men that the church had rejected. Hallelujah to God. How did he do that? I, I want to hear Barnabas' story. How does a man get to be a, 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 a minor of, of men of God? Somebody that goes and rescues other men? Because typically those men have been through something themselves. And somebody redeemed them. Are you listening to me? And so to be able to, to do, he, he got Paul, and then when Paul rejected Mark, he went and got Mark. And then he disappears from, from the pages of the Bible, but he didn't disappear from the kingdom of God. I'll assure you that man of God continued pulling up young men of God and redeeming them. Come on, y'all. He didn't let his emotional attachment to, to the ministry keep him from doing what God had, had, had uniquely equipped him to do emotions are liars and the way we're going to overcome emotion is to do the hard things to do what god's called us to do amen, amen. pharaoh this my, my this is my last thing here purpose i already read this purpose is not always visible but problems are amen but god's always in the mix god was in the mix when pharaoh chased the people of israel into the red sea and I don't, I must, I, this is not me. I had to have stolen this because it, it doesn't look right to me. It said they went in slaves, but God chased them out as sons. And he removed Pharaoh's, he moved Pharaoh's army into the Red Sea to kill them. Amen. God was in the mix when Pharaoh chased the people of Israel into the Red Sea. Come on. He had his intention was to destroy their enemies. And what the Lord said to us today, look back. Come on, look back over your shoulder. This is the last time you're going to see that enemy. I want to assure you tonight, friends, the thing that is, if fear keeps you uh, locked up and fear keeps you, prevents you from really pursuing the will and the purpose of God or, or whatever negative emotion you can, you, you can name. I want, I want to tell you here tonight, you do not have to be led by your emotions. Amen. Emotions are not, you're not meant to serve emotions. Emotions should serve you. Come on, I, I get emotional when I get up here and pray, and I'll cry. Uh, 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 little Gabby, she got, she, she got the Kleenex this morning she, after service. She said, I'm going to wipe my tears up. I said, don't do that. That's my job. I'm serious. We first put these, uh, these altars in, and every Sunday morning I'd, or after church on Sunday, I'd come in here, and I'd get that pledge, and I'd wipe the tears and the snot off them altars, and I'd just weep. Oh, come on, y'all. That's emotional. But it's emotion used in the right way. 
It's responding to the, to the move of the Spirit of God. It is saying yes. And, and let me tell you, when there's a tear coming down at an altar, that means somebody somewhere is deciding to say no to their will, no to their emotions, and yes to the will and the purpose of God. When you do that, there is a release. Amen. And it's a wonderful thing. So we get the mind right by listening to a different voice. We, 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 we get the will right by seeing things that others cannot see. That's, that, that's in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the end of that chapter. And we get, we get, we get the, the, the mind, will, the emotions. We get the emotions right by doing the hard things. It's hard to come to an altar and to, and to die. Oh, but when you do, <laughs> those emotions get right. I'm not, I'm not crying over a, a TV program. JR, going to jail. Uh, yeah, that's over some of y'all said. I don't know any modern day sitcom. <laughs> okay. Huh? Barney Five, yeah. Yeah. What, whatever, you know, we used to we used to call them what soap operas, right? You know, you know, that people would come to, to, to church and they would talk about women, you know, going through something and they're just crying and it's like, oh, who, well, who is this lady that go visit? Oh no, it's on TV. It's like you're getting all wrapped up emotional about this thing, and it's just a TV program. Come on. I'm not talking about getting emotional over that. You get your emotions where you respond to the will of God, for the presence of God. When he comes in and you get your mind, I, I, like I did tonight, I'm like, oh, God, Lord, I want to worship you, Jesus, and not just this song, not my sim uh, 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 sentimental attachment to this song. You know, we do. Uh, can, can, give me five more. Can I have five more minutes? Anybody? Anybody? 5, 10, 15. Okay, I'm good. I'll be done in 15. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. <laughs> but we use emotion to manipulate people in church. We tell us that. I, I, th this never really happened at my home church, but when I went on, on staff at a large church in Waco, we had... Uh, a certain big name singing group that a lot of y'all probably have their records, so I won't call their names. Uh, they drove a big bus, and they come, and they, I mean, they took 10 minutes of the, of the, of the service talking about, about, you know, how bad their tires are on their bus, and they just blew a tire, and, and I'm like, oh, my, and you can see the used car salesman all over them, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, my Lord, they're just telling this sad story to manipulate people to put money in the offering. And, and that kind of probably has a whole lot to do with why I do offerings like I do. I'm, if i got to manipulate you to get your money, keep it in your pocket. I don't want to pacify your, your, your uh, uh, conscience. Amen. Tithers are going to tithe. Givers are going to give. The rest of you just sit on it and we'll see how that works. Amen. Uh, but, but, you know, that we, we, use, we use sad stories and sad songs to manipulate people and get them off in their emotion. But guess what? You get people to respond to an emotion and you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to have emotional people that the first time the sun comes up, they're not going to be able to stand the heat, and they're going to melt. Come on. It, 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 it's the seed falling on the stony ground. It's, it, it, it's, it's not an emotion. Yes, it gets emotional up here, but it's not about the emotion. It's about the work that God is doing in a life. And I'm not apologizing for emotions, but what I'm trying to do is put the ditches here. Amen. We, emotions, as we've said, will lie to you. It can be good, bad. It can be all over the place. Emotions should be the result, the response to, to your decision to follow Jesus, not the thing that brings you to the point. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. Get a hold of you. In the last day, if, if what we just read about Jesus, when they grab your son or your daughter, your mother or your daddy, they grab your preacher. Some of y'all actually love me. And they take me to jail and they're going to they're, they're gonna, they're gonna, you know, give me the, the lethal injection because I've offended somebody by preaching the wrong thing. Come, what are you you going to get all emotional? Or are you going to say, you're going you're gonna to call a prayer meeting and expect a miracle? Come on, expect them, the prison doors to open up and pastor come walking out. I'm going to get emotional. I'm going to do that little helicopter dance up in here. Look what the Lord has done. Come on. <laughs> I'm just telling you, in the last days, there's going to be lots of, 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 of opportunity to get emotional about things that we don't need to be emotional about. We need to be emotional about certain things we ought to be emotional about. You ought to get emotional when you see somebody come up here and get saved. 
You ought to get emotional when they get baptized in water. You ought to get happy, full of joy, unspeakable, and full of glory when men and women are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. When healings are occurring and God is moving, that ought to create real joy. We talk about the difference between joy and happiness. Friends, joy is a fruit of the Spirit, in it, and when we keep it in the ditches, we, can, we are the happiest people on the planet. Amen. I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Come on. Get the emotions right by doing the will and the purpose of God. Amen. Stand to your feet tonight. Guys, do me a favor. Put on some Muzak back there. Muzak. I want, I want us just to, there's just a handful of us here tonight. Now, that's not speaking a, a lack of faith. That's just a fact. Amen. That's what happens when I preach too long on Sunday mornings. <laughs> I, heard, I heard last Monday night's prayer meeting was, was sparsely attended because we didn't get out of here until almost 10 o'clock. So <laughs> that's, probably, so that's probably why. I get it. Everybody's got, got something to do. But I want us to do this. I want us to come up here tonight, and I want us to pray Tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, was it, no, we just had the National Day of Prayer. That was, that was Thursday, okay. Well, I missed that. I was in, in uh, Arizona. But I want us to do this. I want us to come up here tonight. I want to pray for this nation. Is that all right? Uh, to you uh, Facebook people or online people, that doesn't make me a nationalist. <laughs> I got accused of being a nationalist. I'll, I'll get, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wrestle with that till I, I satisfy that in my mind. It makes me a man that's, that's trying to exercise good stewardship over the freedom that I have. Our nation is in a wreck. I, I don't want to go down the trail that we're headed down. Come on. I don't want to see my kids suffering and, 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 and uh, possibly my grandchildren being hungry. Oh, you talk about negative emotion? That's going to bring up some negative emotion. Let me tell you something. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen a seed begging for bread. When I read those, the, the judgments that, 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 that hit on, on that land of Egypt, Goshen was spared, every one of them. Come on, y'all. The hand of God is upon us. Are you listening to me? <laughs> the church is the ark. You better get on the ark if you want to avoid the trouble that is coming. Amen. But get on the right one. Amen. Some of them boats got holes in it. Amen. But this, this, the, the, this, this is a, the, the, uh, the old glory ship. I'm going to take a trip on that good old gospel ship. <laughs> Amen. Father, I love you and I thank you for who you are here tonight. Lord, you are a good and a faithful God. We've, we, 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 we've read your word and how in patience with our endurance we've got to buy or purchase, acquire our soul. We've got to win the battle for the mind, the battle for our will, the battle for our emotions. And, Lord, there's all kind of stimuli out there trying to get us to think a certain way or do a certain thing. But, Master, I pray for this people right here tonight that, Lord, we won't be moved by what we see or what we hear or what we feel in the natural. But we will be moved by what we see that others cannot see, by what we hear that others cannot hear. And, Lord, that will enable us to do the things that others cannot do. Bless this people is my prayer. Father God, I pray for every prodigal tonight. Why don't you just do that? I know y'all might hesitate. Just grab a neighbor right now. Just pray. Let's pray together. Father, I pray for every prodigal in the mighty name of Jesus. That, Lord, you will open the, open the floodgates of heaven and rain upon them in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, oh God, that, that men and women will be compelled to come to a place of prayer and ask you to save them. Lord, I thank you that the prodigals are waking up and coming to themselves that Lord there is a destruction in the future and God if they're going to avoid it they're going to have to be a part of your kingdom so Lord let your kingdom come here tonight we pray let your will be done Lord in this earth and in this house and in this people as it is in heaven hallelujah 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 father we trust you tonight we trust you trust you trust you Lord have your way have your way have your way Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Press in, people, press in. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you're mighty to save. You're mighty to save. You're mighty to save. Thank you for touching. Thank you, Father God, for ministering life and peace and health. Jesus. Oh, I thank you for good report. A good report makes fat the bones. I thank you for testimonies all in this house, Lord, about how you're working in families, how you're, how you're ministering, God, to sons and daughters and grandchildren. Lord, I thank you for the fruit of our prayer, Lord. Hallelujah. That repentance and salvation is being preached. and Men and women are pressing violently, forcefully into the kingdom. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let us win the battle for the mind, Lord. Let us win the battle for this nation, oh God. I pray for our president, the vice president, the cabinet, Lord, the Senate, the Congress, the Supreme Court, the federal courts. Oh God, there's corruption at every hand. But God, this, this is still a nation with a, with a remnant of believers. Oh Jesus, I thank you that there's a sanctifying group here. There, there's a little leaven in this lump, oh God. Lord, I thank you that the kingdom of heaven is advancing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. God bless America. God bless America, Lord. Bless us with revival. Bless us with repentance. Lord, I come against the lies of the enemy. Lord God, I come against this, this, this homosexual spirit, all the transgenderism mess that's going on. God, the attack upon our children, we stand. Lord God, lock arms. God, we stand. We raise up a standard against it. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lord, I pray that you'll raise up an army of evangelists. That, Lord, we'll put the trumpet to our mouth and we'll preach a gospel, Lord God, that will tear down the strongholds of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, every lie that has attached itself to the pain of abuse and molestation and, 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 and got all of the wounds that have come into this, into this nation, Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that, God, you'll give us, you'll, you'll let that healing oil flow through your church. Let your, let your church be a place of healing and not a place of wounding is my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, thank you, all sorrows will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Come on, sing that again. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to encourage you to be back tomorrow night for prayer. Amen. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock for Bible study. Sunday morning, Mother's Day, we're going to have gifts for all the moms, and we're going to have one service, and we're going to kick you all out of here. I love you. Pray blessings on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.